Good morning, Warhawks. I am Cheyenne Monk, Battalion Commander of the Delph Hill Jericho C. Warhawk Battalion. I have the privilege of introducing today's speaker. Margaret Peterlin serves as an assistant professor of law at the Antonio Scalia Law School at George Mason University, where she teaches covert action, clandestine, and special operations law. Margaret flexibly transitions across industries and organizations, having served as an SVP at ANT, ANT following her senior leader position at the U.S. Department of State when Chief of Staff to Secretary Rex Tillerson. Previously, she was a global executive at Mars Incorporated, co-led a large federal agency, worked for both the Speaker and the Majority Leader of the House of Representatives, clerked for a U.S. Court of Appeals judge, and served as a commissioned officer in the U.S. Navy. Having served in all three branches of federal government and in two global companies, she is finally spending time in academia, which was lingering on her list until now. While Chief of Staff, Margaret managed the Office of the Secretary for a department of 77,000 globally distributed colleagues. Diplomatically, she participated in engagements with 35-plus heads of state and 100-plus foreign ministers. Organizationally, she introduced performance metrics for bureau work, products, and embedded essential approaches to policy setting, serving 300 million plus fellow Americans while working by, with, and through our allies to diminish our enemies was a marvelous opportunity. Prior to this role, Mars Incorporated depended on Ms. Peterlin to introduce ROI for manufacturing technology. As the Global Technology Strategy Officer, Ms. Peterlin developed a framework to identify and prioritize Mars Incorporated's grand challenges, the one-tier risk, and opportunities. This corporate officer role introduced reshaping the Board's Technology Committee as the lone lawyer on the Global Innovation Leadership Team. Ms. Peterlin released the continuous learning opportunities. At the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, USPTO, Ms. Peterlin served as Deputy Undersecretary for Intellectual Property, IP, and the Deputy Director of the USPTO. As Deputy Director, Ms. Peterlin operated as the COO to provide strategic leadership to over 9,700 employees, 2,600 contractors, and a management budget of $2.1 billion. It was a great organizational achievement for the USPTO to achieve all quality protection measures during her tenure. As Deputy Undersecretary, Ms. Peterlin advised the Office of the President and the Secretary of Commerce on IP, led U.S. delegations abroad, and testified before Congress. Before her shift to the executive branch, Ms. Peterlin served as a policy analyst and counsel for legal policy for the Speaker of the House, eventually serving as his National Secretary Advisor. As senior staff, Ms. Peterlin advised the Speaker and other House and Congressional leaders on legislative policy and strategy in a highly matrix environment. Ms. Peterlin's portfolio in do included judiciary, intelligence, science, armed services, international relations, homeland security, and foreign operations. Margaret lived in Virginia with some amazing people, her husband Dan, and her three highly energetic kids, Silas, Eda May, and Miles. Hi, my name is Margaret Peterlin. And I'm excited to talk to you all today about a couple of interesting topics. The first, Delville, Alabama. The second, how can we be good Americans? And the third, America, where do we go from here? I was pretty excited to get the email from Mrs. Robertson asking if I would be interested in participating in the Veterans Day celebration. It was a pretty immediate yes for me. And the reason why is, is I'm from Delville, Alabama. And I love Delville, Alabama. In fact, when I was dating my husband, at one point he mentioned to me that he didn't know what a hush puppy was. And at that point I paused and I said, okay, that's it. We're gonna have to go down to McLean's restaurant and you're gonna have to try a hush puppy. He also tried some fried catfish. So I have many fond memories. My dad was an army helicopter pilot. He was stationed at Fort Rooker where I was born. I know about that big bear, and in fact, that big bear was a big part of my childhood stories growing up. My dad would tell me how much that bear wanted me to do my homework and not talk to strangers. So I am proud to say that I'm from Delville, Alabama, and it's funny. I know a lot of people ask me, Margaret, what's in Delville, Alabama? And the first thing I normally say is red clay <laughs> to kind of say, you know, if you don't know where it is, you don't know where it is. But then I tell them, you know, I have some of the best memories growing up. I have memories of being outside, meeting people, just having time to myself, having time with my siblings. I, we actually lived on Springdale Circle. 
And so um, I've gone back a couple of times, knocked on the door of Total Stranger's house and said, hey, this is where I grew up. I just wanted to walk around the yard a little bit. <laughs> Thankfully, nobody's ever called the police on me. Um, but I didn't stay in Daleville, Alabama. That's true. We moved to Biloxi, Mississippi, and then my parents managed to find a place even more rural than Delville, Alabama, and that was Chassa Howitzka, Florida. I'm gonna say that slowly again. Chassa Howitzka, Florida. This place is so rural that one day I was visiting a senator from Florida. I was teasing his staff that they didn't really know Florida because if they couldn't tell me where Chassa Howitzka was on a map. And then I asked the senator and the senator didn't know. So I didn't stay there either. I kept moving. And so at this point in my life, I've been to 77 countries. Uh, COVID kind of put that, kicked that number for a little while. So I'm, I'm traveling again. And along the way, I've had the opportunity to join the Navy. I was an, a commissioned Naval officer and I actually worked in the Pentagon. And then I worked at the Washington Navy Yard. I worked on Capitol Hill I clerked for a federal judge on the Fifth Circuit. So that's the circuits just below the Supreme Court. I worked, when I worked on the Hill, I worked for the majority leader of the House of Representatives, which is sort of the number two in the leadership structure there. And then I worked for the Speaker of the House. And at one point when I was working for the Speaker of the House, I was the Speaker's National Security Advisor. And so I had the opportunity to uh, participate in oversight and, and the briefings that the Speaker of the House received and go on all of his travels with him. I've, act, I've worked at the State Department. So I was the Chief of Staff for the State Department at the time when Secretary Tillerson was the Secretary. And so I have really enjoyed seeing lots of other places. And that leads me to what I wanna talk about I thought the prompts that you all had for your essay contests and your picture contests were fantastic. So I want to stick to those topics. So the first one was, how can I be a good American? And I know the assignment for that one was to draw something, but let's just say my artistic skills were in ballet and dance and not in drawing. So I'm going to stick to words for this one. So in my experience, the best way to be a good American is to start by being a good you. And that means, again, in my experience, you have to chase your ignorance. It's hard to know who you really are if you only know one thing, or if you blind yourself from the world around you. So I always say, chase your ignorance. I've worked at a food company, I've worked at a telecommunications company, and about three years ago, I bought a piece of land and I'm trying to figure out how to raise cattle on it and goats and horses and chickens. And when people ask me, why are you doing that? I said, cause I don't know how to do it yet. So I'm gonna figure it out. And I think that that's a really important freedom to give yourself. We're not all interested in theater. We're not all interested in studying math. We're not all interested in playing a musical instrument. But there's something wonderful about understanding it and understanding the artistry of another person. So when you discover yourself, when you put in that time and energy and make sure you're seeing the world around you as best you can. I mean, when I was seven and living in Daleville, we weren't traveling to London. We weren't traveling to Germany. We weren't going to Malaysia, all places that I've since been. So I read, I read whatever books that I could get my hands on because that was the way for me to discover the world. So give yourself, give yourself that time, really respect that you have some kind of amazing inside of you and you just need to figure out what it is. And then once you know what that is, give some of that back, give some of that back to your country. This question, how can I be a good American? I love it, it's eternal to me. Because when I was 18, I was asking myself the same type of question. What did I owe my country? I was making applications to colleges. I was figuring out what I was gonna do. And I was 18, so I had it figured out. 
I knew that I could teach, I could volunteer, or I could join the military. It's part of giving back to my country. And as I looked at those, I thought, and I think my children and all my friends would still testify to this today, I lacked the fundamental patience <laughs> to be a teacher on a daily basis. Uh, and I thought volunteer work is something that I would always do. I'd find a way to incorporate volunteer work into my day, just like I had done in high school. And so for me, it was the military. The military was this opportunity to have a challenge for myself and I was doing it for my country anyway. So however it worked out was gonna be fine with me. And guess what? It worked out. I ended up working at the Pentagon, having an opportunity to intern at the White House, to be a White House social aide. And this quite frankly was after a little bit of disappointment. I had asked to go to the UK and then I had asked to go to Italy. And then my third choice finally, when I was talking to my detailer was, fine, just send me anywhere on the East Coast, you know, because I had lived in different parts of the East Coast. Had I known what an amazing opportunity I would have had, I would have been begging for the job that I got to be a telecommunications officer at the Pentagon, whose job was to keep the Chief of Naval Operations and the Secretary of the Navy in contact with the fleet. And I was fresh out of college. I was the youngest person of the team I was leading, I was the youngest person. And every single one of them knew more about communications than I did. And so it was another great opportunity for me to chase my ignorance, for me to learn from my team. So when I think about how can, how can we be good Americans, it's first be yourself, figure out who you are and be a good version of that. Be kind, don't be cynical. Don't cringe at everything all of the time. <laughs> Embrace other people's fascination. If somebody at school loves to read Aristotle, that's fantastic. Ask them about it. Ask them why it's interesting. And one of the things that it taught me as well is that this opportunity of self-discovery and then the ability to give back is really unique to democracies. And I was reminded of that pretty essentially. I was in Estonia for work and I was having lunch, a little bit of a social lunch with a minister of the EU, the European Union. He's a pretty se uh, senior minister and his wife. And we were talking about college. They had a daughter who's in college. And the most significant thing that was said to me that day was by her, the, the mother, she said to me, I'll never forget just finding out what college I was gonna go to. And I thought the typical, oh, you get a letter in the mail and you find out if you accept it or not. No, she got dressed in a, her nicest starched white shirt and walked up to the table and somebody assigned her a college and a, and a degree because at that point, Estonia was still a communist country. And she, to this day, her entire life, right, in terms of what she was allowed to study in the field that she was entered into was determined by somebody else based on we're not really sure what information. So I thought for a moment, thank goodness I'm an American. Like I got to be Margaret. I got to decide that I wanted to study political science. I got to decide that I wanted to join the Navy. I mean, I was really good in math in school. What if they had sent me in that direction? So again, when I think about how can we be good Americans, it's first be a good you and then give some of that back. Make space and make shelter for the next group who's coming through because we have the opportunity to determine what we're going to do with our lives. It's not inherited and it's not granted. So it has to be earned. And then the second question, America, where do we go from here? That's another question that I love because I think it's right. Where do we go from here? Where do we go together from here? There's 340 million of us. And that's pretty hopeful to me because that's an enormous capacity for greatness. There are so many people with so many individual interests and so much drive to do better for themselves, their communities, and their country. 
we can go to a lot of great places. And some of the things, some of the path to get there is going to involve us addressing some critical issues at home, but also abroad. My time at the State Department allowed me to meet uh, with Putin, President Putin of Russia, and President Xi of China. These are pretty much installed leaders. <laughs> and it's a very different life for people in the government, for people in the society in that place, than it is here at home. So when I think of Veterans Day, I think about how grateful I am that my dad was flying helicopters for the army and my granddad was in the army as well. And I think I'm so glad I'm in this meeting as an American <laughs> and I get, to, I get to leave and go home to a place where little girls get to decide what they wanna study in college and little girls get to decide what they wanna be and what countries they wanna visit for across their life. So I do think it's important that we also hold ourselves individually accountable because we are a nation of the people. The government is the government through us with our permission. It's our authority that they use. So keep in mind, America cannot be any better than we are. If you want America to be better, that's on you. If I want America to be better, it's still on me. I'm not done contributing to this great country because I'm still ambitious and I'm still hopeful and I'm still optimistic that little girls or little boys or big girls or big boys from Delville, Alabama can go and see and do whatever it is they want. And if that means staying in Delville, Alabama because your family has a business there and you guys are going to fry the best hush puppies <laughs> that exist, then that is fantastic. That is exactly what a good American does. But if it means going and working at the Department of State or the Department of Commerce or the Department of Justice or working in the state government level, whatever that is, get to doing it. Hold yourself accountable to do it with an eye on your community, on your on your and on your nation. So I really am delighted that you guys took a few minutes out of your Veterans Day to hear from me. And the one thing I'll tell you is if you get to the Washington DC area, cause that's where I live and work now. I'm a, I'm a professor. I teach a class on counterterrorism law. And I also teach a class on the foreign policy process. And I do quite a bit of, of writing on the great power competition between the United States and the communist Chinese party. Uh, look me up because I'm not kidding. Anybody who knows about McLean's or that two-story bear on uh, Fort Rucker is someone that I want to have a conversation with. And in the meantime, honor yourself. Find out the thing that makes you work hard, as hard as you possibly can, that drives you to be excellent. And then just remember to give some of that back to the rest of us because we need it. It's uh, There's a lot to do, and I'm really looking forward to the one or two or 27 of you that reach out to me. I will give my email address to Mrs. Robertson, and anybody is welcome to use it. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your Veterans Day celebration, and take care. Love you, Delville.
others by respecting my teacher and by my parents. How I can also be a good American is by doing what I am told. I can be a good American by believing that my country can change be, to be more responsible. What I mean by that is to stop littering for more people to follow the rules or law and for people to respect each other. To be a good American, you have to keep your environment clean and be kind. Take care of the plants. Don't throw trash in the grass or in the water because you can feel animal by the way and the environment. So to be a good American, keep the environment safe. I can be a good American because I can help the people do things in life, like picking up stuff off the sidewalk. When you help someone, most of the time they'll help you back. I can be a good citizen in this world. Also, you should treat the POW like you would want to be treated. Thank you for all your help. Do you know how you can be a good American? There are a lot of ways to be a good American. We could use better Americans in this world because if we don't become better Americans, it could destroy us even more than we already are. Being a good American to me is following the rules, cleaning, and helping others. I can follow the rules by following school rules like dress code, listening to teachers, doing my work, and more. I can also follow my community's rules by picking up my own trash, not littering, recycling, and picking on, not picking on others. If you don't follow these rules, you could possibly be kicked out of the place you are in. There are a lot more rules that you have to follow, like in America like laws. <coughs> Following these rules will help America and Americans become better. I can clean by doing my chores, like d doing dishes, sweeping, mopping, making my bed, and doing the laundry. Doing my chores helps my home become better for me and my family and people who come over. I can also do community cleaning, like at school, parks, roads, the beach, etc. Recycling, not littering, and more are important to keep our community clean and healthy. Cleaning can help our world become a better place for animals and ourselves. I can help others by cleaning. Uh, <coughs> I can help others by helping elders or children cross the road. I can also help others by helping my parents with bringing in the groceries, getting the mail, and just talking to them can make them feel good since not a lot of kids these days are talking or spending time with their parents, but just staying on their devices. I can help my teachers with anything they need done, like help cleaning the classroom. I can also help others, like cleaning my friend, or helping my friends with any problems they might have. There are a lot more things you can do to help your parents or any person in this world to make them have a better day. You can be a good American by following rules, cleaning, and helping others. Doing these things will help our world become better. We need more good Americans in this world. Anything you do to help our world makes you a good American. We can be good Americans by contributing to caring for the environment obeying the laws and paying taxes. <clears throat> we should contribute to caring for the environment because we could help make Earth a better place. And there's only one Earth. We should obey the laws or we could be arrested or face other serious consequences. We need to pay taxes because it funds government programs like schools, being a good American is to be a good citizen of the world. To care and preserve the environment, we need to be mindful of waste and how what we do affects the earth and environment. Actions such as recycling and reducing waste help our environment. By doing things such as recycling, not littering, we can help protect our environment. A clean environment is key to a healthy living. Pollution can have a serious impact on the environment and also cause health issues for people. 
To obey laws of our country is to do what is right. By following the laws of the land, we are setting a good example for others. If we lived in a lawless society, anarchy would reign, and our society would not be safe. If we don't obey the laws, we could go to jail. Obeying the laws is the right thing for, an, for a citizen to do. Paying taxes is our duty as a citizen. Paying our fair share of taxes enables the government to run and fund programs to help fellow citizens and to fund public schools. Paying taxes also supports and helps community resources such as police, firefighters, public libraries, parks, and roads. Paying taxes also provide essential services and utilities such as energy and water. In conclusion, we can be a good American by doing the right thing in all that we do. Caring for and protecting our environment is following the law, setting a good example, caring and helping others in need and striving to be a better citizen are all things that make a good American citizen. If we follow all of these examples, we can make the world a better place for everyone.